Myths, fantasies, and fairy tales surround us at work or play. Just like when you were a child and were told stories that made you believe in magic beans from Jack and the Beanstalk or the Tooth Fairy, the construction industry has a few tall tales of its own. But it's time for a reality check against these popular but mistaken ideas. Hi, I'd like to order some concrete from my patio in my backyard. What do you guys recommend? Well, actually, we recommend a six-bag mix for patios, and we do have that. All I need is some more information from you, and we could send it right out. Specifying bags of cement without tying in the amount of water is no specification at all. One of the most important properties of a concrete mix is the water to cement ratio. Mixes need to meet performance requirements, including a minimum compressive strength that's governed by the amount of water in the mix, not just the cement content. What's your slump? Two and a half inches. It's way too dry. I want 10 gallons. Adding just one gallon of water to one cubic yard of concrete can increase slump one inch, decrease compressive strength 150 to 200 PSI, waste about one quarter bag of cement, and increase shrinkage. So, how can slump be adjusted in the field without adding more water? Consider using a water reducer or super plasticizer at the site to increase the slump while maintaining the water to cement ratio. Back at the plant, you can modify the proportions or gradations of aggregates. The grading and maximum size of aggregates influence cement and water requirements that directly affect the workability. Measure and correct for variations in moisture content of aggregates throughout the work day. Also, Monitor prolonged delivery and unloading time, which can decrease the slump. It is important to maintain high quality control from truck to truck so that reasons for differences in slump can be identified. Thanks, it looks great. Is there anything else I need to do? No, it'll be fine, just let it dry out. As cement hydrates, new chemical compounds form in the fresh concrete. The new compounds are responsible for setting and hardening and strength properties of concrete. Loss of water prevents continued hydration. Curing maintains a satisfactory moisture content and temperature within the concrete to ensure that desired properties develop. The longer the period of time that you cure concrete, the stronger and more durable it will become. Hey, is that slab ready?
Finishing concrete is an art. It takes experience to know when to begin finishing operations. The terms overfinishing and premature finishing haunt concrete finishers every time they tackle a fresh slab. Improper finishing can cause surface defects such as blisters, dusting, crazing, and delaminations. Relying on the absence of a sheen of water on the surface to determine when bleeding has stopped may not be enough. Depending on the concrete properties and environment, bleeding may still occur when it isn't visible. The bleed water may be evaporating as soon as it reaches the slab surface. Bleeding must be completed throughout the slab thickness before finishing can begin. The use of power finishing tools has changed the recommended indentation depth from one half inch in the past to one quarter inch for walk behind and riding power trowels and one eighth inch for heavier riders. With higher floor flatness tolerances, required finishing operations may need to begin earlier than usual. Choosing the appropriate time to begin finishing operations takes good judgment and knowledge of materials being used. Hey man, it's gonna get pretty cold tonight. You think we ought to cover this concrete with blankets or something? We don't have to worry about that concrete, Johnny. It's got calcium chloride in it. The concrete can still freeze if not properly protected. Concrete gains strength very slowly in low temperatures. The use of accelerators, such as calcium chloride, increases strength development at an early age. However, the fresh concrete must be protected from freezing until the concrete has reached a minimum strength of 500 PSI or significant strength reductions will occur. To avoid problems while placing concrete in cold weather, you can maintain concrete temperature using enclosures, insulated forms, and curing blankets. Hey, are we pouring today? The ground's pretty frozen. Yeah, it's a go. The concrete will heat up the soil. Never place concrete on frozen ground. When the subgrade thaws, it may settle unevenly and cause cracking. The difference in temperature between the frozen soil and warm concrete can cause rapid cooling of the concrete and may retard the rate of hardening. Ideally, the soil temperature should be as close as possible to the concrete temperature when placed. There are things you can do to thaw the ground and place concrete. Never place pellets of calcium chloride on the frozen ground to thaw the surface. How come is so much steel over there? They put that steel down there to keep the concrete from cracking. Volume changes caused by temperature and moisture cycles are a natural part of a concrete's life. Concrete restrained from movement may crack because concrete is weak in tension. 
Many times it is the rebar that causes the restraint and allows the cracking. The structural reinforcement does not prevent cracking, but instead holds the cracked faces together. That process transmits the tensile stress from the concrete to the steel and allows concrete to withstand higher tensile loads. I think it's a perfectly level slab and I'm very happy with it. In addition to horizontal movements caused by changes in moisture and temperature in a concrete slab, changes in shape, including curling, often occur. Curling is the lifting of the slab edges at joints and cracks. Curling can be caused by differences in moisture content and temperature between the top and the bottom of the slab. So is this concrete going to be dry enough to put flooring down? Yes. Concrete's a very dense material. Nothing will get through it. To say that something is as solid as concrete really means that it is as porous as a sponge. Concrete is permeable. Moisture and other substances in the form of liquid and vapor can pass through it. Depending on just how porous the concrete is, that can take anywhere from a few hours to a few months to happen. To make concrete less permeable and more watertight, use mixed designs with a lower water to cement ratio uniform aggregate gradation, chemical and mineral admixtures such as superplasticizers and silica fume, and provide a vapor retarder directly underneath the slab. I have the results of your 28-day breaks. They averaged out at 65.50. Ah, that's great news. That makes my day. That concrete will make it through a lot of winters. Although compressive strength is an important characteristic of concrete, other qualities can be even more important for concrete in harsh environments. In general, the principal causes for deterioration in concrete are corrosion of reinforcing steel, exposure to freeze-thaw cycles, alkali silica reaction, and sulfate attack. All of these problems start with exposure to moisture. Reducing concrete's permeability and an adequate air void system are the keys to durability. Continuing the education process, uh, make sure that the suppliers are educated, number one, that they then inform the contractors what the implications are as far as potential changes that 
that they're asking for and that the contractors and the engineers are uh, specifying the right uh, products that uh, they know they also know what the implications are. It just takes time to get rid of the myths. Education, uh, repeated uh, attempts, showing you, you can't just show somebody once or twice, you have to show them several times and uh, when they see maybe that it can cost them money when you have a reputable, con reputable contractor that you're dealing with and he is taking responsibility for failures of concrete and he recognizes what his responsibility in it and that he can uh, change that, then I think we'll see, we'll see changes for the industry. If the myths were dispelled, we would have a totally improved industry. We would all prosper in the industry. I think our, our customers would use our product rather than other products and uh, it would be better for everyone all around.